Hi, welcome to episode 10 of Collecting Disney. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about the Disneyland guide maps that I have in, in a couple binders because guide maps are something that everyone can collect. You don't even have to pay money to get them. You can always just go to the, the Disneyland Esplanade or Downtown Disney and ask a cast member for a map and they'll give you one. So there's something that everyone can collect. Um, I've loved collecting them over the years. When we think of guide maps, you know, this is kind of what we think about. Something like this, you know, when you open it up, it has a, a nice picture of the park. And uh, that's kind of what they look like nowadays. But in the past, the guidebooks looked a lot different. I'm going to show you some of those guide maps here. In 1955 and 1956, there were kind of two different guide maps. Well, at least things that I would consider guide maps. One of them was sponsored by Bank of America. You can see here on the bottom, Bank of America had their information. Um, but as you open this one up, it kind of folds a couple different ways. And the map is right here, color coded. And then over down here, it tells you, you know, what different rides and attractions are, are in Adventureland. And of course, Adventureland being red would be that section right there. Uh, Frontierland they had in blue. Uh, over here, I usually think of Tomorrowland in blue, but that's not the way they had it back then. But uh, so it did have all the rides and the the, the, sh the shops and uh, some of the restaurants and places to eat. And then of course, Bank of America had its own advertisement on the inside, and they did a very very similar uh, guide map in 1956 as well, which I have right behind it. Um, this is the 1956 guide map, um, but Disneyland also put out their own um, version of that for quite a few years, and uh, that's entitled Welcome to Disneyland. And I, I consider this a guide map as well because it does also have a map of Disneyland. And on the back, it has a little write-up on each of the different lands, uh, along with some of the attractions in there. Over here, we have all the, the restaurants. Um, so Disneyland put these guide maps out from 55 to about 65, if I remember right. I'm gonna put this back in and, and I'll show you what some of them look like. They just, they're just they pretty much the same, Welcome to Disneyland, but they had different characters on them. 56 and 57 both had Tinkerbell though. There's a couple more. Then as we get into the 60s, the mid 60s, the guide map started being sponsored by INA, uh, which stands for Inter uh, Insurance Company of North America. In the INA maps, I have one out already. They were a little bit thicker. In fact, this one had 29 pages. Um, but they accomplished the same purpose. They had general information about Disneyland. And then they went, oh, actually before I could say that, the coolest thing about these is they had what different attractions you could get for an A ticket, B ticket, C ticket, D ticket, and E ticket. Back in the day, you used to have different coupons that you'd get as part of the ticket package, or you could pay 70 cents for a D ticket. You could pay 85 cents every time you wanted to ride an E ticket attraction, but it lists all the different rides that were considered E tickets. And I think it's kind of a cool little snapshot of time to figure out, you know, back in 1970, 71, these were all the E ticket rides. Um, then it goes through and details each land separately. So here's a picture of Main Street USA or I should say a diagram of Main Street USA, along with all the different attractions and shops, um, restaurants, and they do that with every single one of the lands. In the middle of the book, they have a map of the entire part of Disneyland. Um, obviously not as, as detailed as, as the ones we have now, but it, I guess it, it accomplished what it, was, what it needed to. Um, so that's kind of what the INA books were. And again, INA sponsored uh, the Disneyland books from 1966 to about 1975. Um, and, and all the all of the INA books very, looked very similar in shape to that one. After INA stopped their sponsorship in '75, Disneyland continued it with the same type of brochure, like right here. Same. This is a non-INA, but you can tell it's about the same size. Um, and Disney did that for a few years until '77, which I don't have any '77 maps, but '78 you can see they start they're starting to uh, become a little more rectangular again and uh, a little bit closer to what we know nowadays. And of course the graphics started becoming really cool on the front with pictures and, and uh, things. But then they kind of digressed a little bit back in the 90s, I feel like anyway. Um, but right here, you can see the Disneyland today doesn't have very many good graphics on the front of them. The good thing about these though, is they tell you exactly when they were made. So in other words, the dates are on the, on the top of them up here. This one was November 23rd, 25th, 96. They made a lot of them for, for every couple of days back then, which was kind of a, 
uh, they don't do that anymore. Now they, they don't switch them out for about probably two or three months. Um, some of the cool maps I have are, you know, for events like the grand opening of California Adventure. This was the cast member brochure. This is the annual pass holder preview days uh, brochure right here. Um, grand opening guide map of California Adventure. So some of those are kind of fun to collect. Um, then I'll take out the newer binder here which is right here. This has all the newer ones from 2005 to the present time. Well, it doesn't have all of them, but it has a lot of them. And uh, you can see the way I've, I've liked to uh, display mine are, oh, and you can see uh, Kodak was the longest running sponsor of any of the guide maps. Um, Kodak started their sponsorship, I have it written down here, uh, from 1984 until 2012. So they sponsored the guide maps for a long time. Um, but what I'd like to do is put the Disneyland and California Adventure ones side by side. And what we did was we took a, a, sheet, a regular page pr uh, protector and then just sewed a line down the middle. So I put Disneyland on one side, California Adventure on the other from our vacations or, or when I would collect them. Um, and of course, if I didn't have the California Adventure one, sometimes I just put the two Disneyland ones side by side. But when I could, like this one here, I'd put the Disneyland and California Adventure side by side. Um, now, the way you can tell... Um, what, when a guide map was made is by the code on the very bottom. I'm not sure how clear this is going to be, but this says DLP-070121. And that mean, that's the date that this was put into circulation. So this was 07 being July, 01 being the first, and 21, 2021. So that's how you can tell by the code when the, the map started, it's uh, being used. And I've used a really, really cool website called dlpmaps.com, and they have been a wealth of information when it comes to figuring out the dates of when the guide maps were used. For instance, this one was used from June to September of 2018. Um, you know, knowing when it was cut off, I got that information from that website, and it was just, it's just been great. Um, the very latest one, I just got this last week, Disneyland California Adventure Guide Maps. These are the ones being currently used right now. Um, but that is a look at the different guide maps of Disneyland and California Adventure. So uh, I, I, uh, I don't have them all. My goal is to try to, to figure out how I can get all the guide maps, which is gonna take me probably forever and it probably will never happen. But uh, it's been a fun uh, trying to collect them all. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I hope you'll join us uh, next time for episode 11.